Good morning. In addition to our mass intentions this day, let us also remember our first and frontline responders, our local faith communities, family, and friends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, gathered this day giving thanks and praise to Almighty God, let us once again open our minds and hearts to his ongoing call to mercy, healing, and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O Lord, who gladness today with the annual commemoration of St. Lucy, Virgin and Martyr, graciously grant that we may be helped by her merits, just as our lives are lit up by the splendor of her example of chastity and fortitude. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Numbers. When Balaam raised his eyes and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came upon him, and he gave voice to his oracle. The utterance of Balaam, son of Beor, the utterance of a man whose eye is true, the utterance of one who hears what God says and knows what the Most High knows, of one who sees what the Almighty sees, and raptured, and with eyes unveiled. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel! They are like gardens beside a stream, like the cedars planted by the Lord. His wells shall yield free flowing waters. He shall have the sea within reach. His king shall rise higher, and his royalty shall be exalted. Then Balaam gave voice to his oracle. The utterance of Balaam, son of Beor, the utterance of the man whose eye is true, the utterance of one whose he who hears what God says and knows what the Most High knows, of one who sees what the Almighty sees, enraptured and with eyes unveiled. I see him, though not now, I behold him, though not near. A star shall advance from Jacob, and a staff shall rise from Israel. The Word of the Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus had come into the temple area, the chief priests and the elders of the people approached him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them in reply, I shall ask you one question. And if you answer it for me, then I shall tell you by what authority I do these things. Where was John's baptism from? Was it from heavenly or of human origin? They discussed this among themselves and said, If we say of heavenly origin, he will say to us, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we fear the crowd, for they all regard John as a prophet. So they said to Jesus in reply, We do not know. He himself said to them, 
neither shall I tell you by what authority I do these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Asking for verification, ID, authority. It's an unfortunate side effect of humanity in the 21st century that we no longer trust people because we do not know them. We simply take their word for it, or we used to, but now eh, you have to be very suspicious. Probably it's because we've been burned before. At the very least, we've been quite disappointed in human nature. The chief priests and the elders ask Jesus for verification, his authorization, his authority for the things he does, teaching, healing, preaching. Perhaps they too have been disappointed in the false prophets. Maybe they've been too neglect, too lax in their own faith life, that when they pray, they don't really pray with the intent of allowing God to be God, but they simply ask for the things they want. And they're disappointed because they don't get what they want. And like little spoiled children, they stomp their feet and walk away. Seems things haven't changed a whole lot in a few thousand years. The human heart, all too often, echoes the demands of the chief priests and the elders, wanting some kind of verification that if we place our hope and trust in Jesus, what do we get out of it? Now, give us some verification, some certification, some kind of a guarantee that if my effort into prayer and belief and living my faith is something I will do 100%, then what's in it for me? Sounds like the original 12, doesn't it? Because in the Gospels, they say the same thing, what's in it for us? But faith is greater than the human heart and the limitations of the human psyche. Faith is that gift handed on from generation to generation, which must be opened and used on a daily basis in order for it to become truly effective in our everyday lives. It's not so much asking the question, where do you come from? What's your authority? Let me see some ID. It's asking the question of ourselves. When we believe, and there are times when we truly believe, how do we believe? How do we really enter into the life of Jesus on his terms? and not our own. My sisters and brothers, with confidence and great faith, we offer our prayers and petitions to God this day, that the church, its leaders and people, may live the example of Christ and all the saints, striving each day to bring peace, healing, and hope to all the world, we pray to the Lord that all who are appointed to the leadership of peoples and of nations may serve with genuine compassion all those entrusted to their care, bringing about unity and peace. We pray to the Lord that all who live with the effects of terminal illness may always know God's mercy, love, and compassion as they embrace the cross each day. We pray to the Lord that all those who have died may be forever blessed in the peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for those prayers, hopes, and petitions we hold this day in the silence of our hearts. O God, in a spirit of love and compassion, you call all people to yourself. May we always seek your guidance with gratitude and confidence. Through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, and the sacrifices of our own lives, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, may the offerings we bring in celebration of St. Lucy be graciously accepted, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. The blood of your blessed martyr Lucy poured out like Christ's in order to glorify your name. In this profound statement of faith, we see your power at work as you strengthen our weakness and provide every grace necessary to bear witness to you through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with all the powers of heaven, we continually worship you upon earth and proclaim without end, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly ask, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim 
by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Lucy, Saint Paul the Apostle, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may the sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm, in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope Francis, Alberto the bishop of this diocese, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, grant kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. United this day in voice and heart, and joining Christians throughout the world with faith, hope, and confidence, we once again echo the prayer of the Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church gathered here this day, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My sisters and brothers, for our world this day, for those who are near and dear to us, we offer a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed 
are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ My sisters and brothers, at this time I invite you to pray the prayer for a spiritual communion. Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on St. Lucy a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant through the power of this sacrament that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads as we pray and ask for God's grace and blessing this day. You believe that the Son of God once came to us, and you look for him to come again. May his coming bring you the light of his holiness, and his blessing bring you freedom. Amen. May God make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. Amen. You rejoice that our Redeemer came to live among us as man. When he comes again in glory, may he bless you with everlasting life. Amen. And may the grace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remaining with you now and forever. Our celebration is ended. Let us go forth throughout this day to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>